visualization of the rotational torsion field and tuning for biological entities. In this video, I will provide an overview of how to adjust the scalar torsion field generator with a focus on the top load instead of the primary coils. The spiral coil design developed by Dr. Constantine Mayo incorporates a unique tuning mechanism utilizing LEDs. This innovative approach allows for precise adjustment of the coil's resonant frequency, enhancing its efficiency and performance in generating scalar waves. The LED-based tuning system likely provides visual feedback enabling fine-tuning of the coil's electromagnetic properties. In contrast, the scalar torsion field generator employs a different configuration, featuring a top-load measure point. This critical component must be carefully aligned with both the transmitter and receiver elements to ensure optimal functionality. The alignment process is crucial for maintaining the coherence and directionality of the scalar waves or torsion fields generated by the device. This precise positioning likely contributes to the overall effectiveness of the generator in producing and manipulating scalar energy or torsion fields, which are hypothesized to have unique properties distinct from conventional electromagnetic waves be aligned with transmitter and receiver. An external LED with neon connected between base and top load helps for visual tuning. The video, Left, posted in 2012 titled Visualization of Longitudinal Waves in Plasma, demonstrates the complex interactions between magnetic fields and plasma. Plasma, the fourth state of matter, consists of an overall neutral charge balance between positively charged atom ions and freely moving negative electrons. This unique composition allows plasma to exhibit fascinating behaviors when subjected to external electromagnetic fields. The interaction between the magnet and the alternating current AC field in the plasma system is analogous to that observed in scalar torsion field generators. Both setups maintain a balanced configuration, operating without a ground connection. The orientation of the magnetic field's rotation is determined by the polarity of the magnet in relation to the applied field. The visualization of a rotational field requires a delicate equilibrium between pulse width, voltage level, and frequency. This intricate balance is crucial for accurately observing the field's behavior. When these parameters are precisely calibrated, the rotation appears to freeze in discrete steps, a phenomenon that is dependent on the oscilloscope's refresh rate and the rotational frequency of the field. This effect is analogous to the stroboscopic illusion observed when viewing a helicopter's rotor in motion where the blades appear stationary despite the aircraft being airborne. Upon achieving this equilibrium, observers can discern a complete 360-degree rotation of the phase relationship between voltage and current. This rotation provides valuable insights into the field's characteristics and behavior. The ability to freeze the rotation at specific points allows for detailed analysis of the field's properties at various stages of its cycle. This technique is particularly useful in studying electromagnetic fields and other systems where rotational electromagnetic phenomena play a crucial role. The demonstration setup showcases a comprehensive array of equipment for generating and measuring scalar torsion fields. The signal generator and power supply, positioned on the left side of the table, provide the necessary electrical input for the system. Adjacent to the power supply sits the Class C amplifier, which serves to boost the signal strength. The core components of the experiment the transmitting and receiving scalar torsion field generators, 
are placed near to facilitate the transfer and detection of the scalar fields. A notable feature of the setup is the visual indicator connected to the top load from the base. This indicator incorporates orange LEDs and a neon light, which activates when the voltage reaches 90 volts, providing a clear visual cue for the system's operational status. The top load itself is equipped with additional elements to enhance the experiment. A Petri dish on the receiving side, potentially for observing the effects of the scalar torsion field on various substances, and a pharmacy bottle on the transmitting side, possibly containing a material to be influenced by or to influence the generated field. This arrangement allows for a comprehensive study of scalar torsion field generation, transmission, and its potential effects on different biological materials. I have started the system now on the demonstration table to give an overview of uh, how we are configuring our top load. So we have the LEDs here in between set currently and we have the neon light bulbs available here on both sides as well. So we have the currently on oscilloscope you see we have both around 70 volts. I have a chamber which is connecting and disconnecting the LEDs but because we have some capacitance in between there is still um, power going through that means the both LEDs are lit up. If I use very very little power below one volt then the chamber will be set so I can see then the LED illuminated under this very low um, voltage condition. The neon light bulb, as mentioned, uh, illuminates when we achieve more than 90 volt, but we need also to have the right phase for the current. That's important. In order to demonstrate how it looks or how we can configure it to see the torsion field in action, that means within one wave, that we can see that there is some phase shift available, we have to do some modification. First of all, we go a little bit in frequency. So that is actually currently a value we can use. Let's see. So that is a good value. Here we see already rotation taking place. What I'm doing is I change go a little higher in the voltage. You see it disappears so it's not visible. It doesn't disappear really but it's not visible anymore. So we are changing the duty cycle. We go down. 150%. So here it's quite nice. We can see that here, but I go a little bit further down. And I change then the frequency. Like that. Change the voltage. 5.6 volts, something like that. And now I go through the frequencies until I find a good value. Should be around 1.3. This is quite looks quite nice as well, as you can see. Bring it down a bit. So that's all related to the sampling rate of the oscilloscope, which is 4 giga um, bit per second. So here we can see that quite nicely. Go to the other frequency. If I have another one, I can show you. This one is, is a good one. So what you see now on the LEDs, on the LEDs they're both illuminated currently and we are moving around in the voltage. That looks quite nice. Let's see if I can be a little bit more precise. I have to do very, very small changes. I see that. That goes up. Let's see if I can do it with a duty cycle a bit more. No. Voltage. Voltage, yes. Thirty-four. So let me stop that for a second.
on the oscilloscope and I take away, let's see if I can do that, take away and the blue line. So we have currently then only the green line visible. That means only the output. Frequency. You want to see a very nice curve, something like set and QT. That looks quite nice. So we have within this waveform, if I can adjust it a little bit with my hand, difficult. Oh, that looks good. See if I can make some adjustments that you can see all the individual lines in between. Fairly difficult. I try to freeze it in that moment. You can see in which direction it rotates here. When I put my hand here, and I use the other side, it goes as, as well in the same direction. And well, it was going forward and backward here just now. But I wanted to show you a little bit more on the details. That's what I meant. Let me squeeze it. So here you can see now within the individual wave that we have a um, continuous phase shifting cycle by cycle is the phase shifting. That means it's, it's indicating the rotation of the waveform. And that is not only on the transmitting on the B, on the E field side, it's also on the field side. So if we take the current now, as you can see here, the current, it does the same thing, however, in a complete different fashion. So it looks different. If I take it over here and overlap it with a current, so that's how the current behaves. It's a, it looks a little bit erratic. And because they are not aligned here completely, you can see also on the LEDs they are both not um, from from the voltage point of view um, il illuminated that storm. Let's put it on again. And if you see the transmitting side, the transmitting might does have the same kind of rotational behavior. However, a little bit more in an organized fashion, if that makes sense to mention it this way. So that looks nice. If I go very, very small steps on QT cycle, it looks like that. If I go now back to the that is very strong. I freeze this for a sec. So that looks very, very strong now. Here, as you can see, uh, just for your information, if you look at the power readings. On the oscilloscope, we measure, of course, now the power which goes to the uh, top load as it would be as an, as an antenna, if you want. And we measure the voltage as well here on our um, measuring points for the top load on our power consumption. Currently, here is 200 milliwatt on the power supply, and here we measure 2.437 watt. I hope that gives you an overview of the functionality of the system. There are so much variations um, available here, and I have started um, only um, with small steps with my development of my current book projects. But I will in incorporate now more of the work here with the devices I just built. And I hope you stay tuned for 
further news and thank you very much for watching and goodbye.